Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to the video. I hope your day is going great. Mine is, and today we have a really cool video. We're going to be talking about a lot of different things. We're starting off with some news though. There are some things I haven't covered in the past few days, so we gotta catch up on that. Then in the last part of this video, we are going to be taking a little look at Hanzo play from the course of the entire Overwatch League season and seeing which teams might possibly have an advantage moving into this next meta and the overall playoffs. So that's going to be the video today, guys. If you're really excited, be sure to drop a like on it, subscribe to my channel for more content. As well, I am going to be live on YouTube streaming Realm Rail. Come learn how to play Realm Rail from one of the pros. Link will be down below. And let's go ahead and start this video off. So we'll start off with some European contenders news. So I don't know how many of you guys followed the EU scene, but there was a team named That's a Disband. A pretty interesting name, right? So these guys played in Contenders Europe Season 1. And they did get relegated down to Trials. And unfortunately, they didn't make it out of Trials for Season 2. And they are now disbanding. They tweeted this out. That's a disband. You either live long enough to name change or you die with the meme. After not making Contender Season 2, that's a disband is gonna disband. All players are now looking for a team. Hashtag that's a disband. It's unfortunate from them. It is cool that they are taking it lightheartedly and you know tweeting this out. Good luck to all those players. Now moving on to some more contenders news. This one is a lot more juicier. Has to do with the New York Excelsiors Academy roster. They tweeted this out. We are happy and proud of welcoming Tizzy and Huyal to the ranks of XL2. Give them a warm welcome to the family. Wow, this is huge news, guys. Tizzy and Huyal, superstar players right here. Honestly, I think Huyal was just as good as Fury. At least that's what it looks like from the outside looking in. Maybe Fury has a little bit better teamwork, synergy with the team. Who knows? Something made them decide to go with Fury over Huyal. But on the outside looking in, just watching their gameplay... They were very similar, and some could argue that who y'all might have been better. So that's a huge addition to the XL2 Academy. If you guys don't remember, Midnight was their off tank for Season 1. They did drop him, and there were rumors, and I don't know, I want to say rumors. I have first-hand experience with Midnight kind of being a little toxic, or at least somebody who is very negative in a team environment, which is never good. And in place of him, they're bringing on who y'all, who this guy has tasted literally being at the top of the entire world in the overwatch league winning stage one he has raw experience being the best and adding an experienced veteran player like this to a young talented contenders roster who really want to achieve success in contenders is huge this guy is going to be a leadership figure i think mentally he's going to be able to provide everything they needed from midnight that he couldn't provide and it's going to be huge from them and some could say oh well you know him dropping out of the overwatch league joining a contenders team that could be a problem, his ego, this, that, blah, blah, blah. To be honest, and this isn't like a, a thing that has to do with race, but most Koreans are extremely humble. I know there's players like Effect out there who are like pretty cocky and full of themselves, which isn't a bad thing either. That helps a lot. But a lot of them, especially the ones who have reached the top, are extremely humble. They understand the situations they're in and they make the most of everything. And I think who y'all is one of those guys and definitely will make the most of everything while he's with XL2. And I haven't even mentioned Tizzy yet, who is going to be replacing Clone Man, who prior to Contenders had really no professional experience, even team experience overall, maybe a little bit at the lowest level. Yeah, he has good mechanics, he's a great streamer, but to be honest, I don't think he was cut to actually compete, or at least need more experience to be playing with the players he was put with, like Flower, like Nene. And because of that, combined with the negativity coming from Midnight, I think could have been the reason why New York Excelsior didn't perform as well as I thought they would have last season. So adding Tizzy, an amazing main tank who used to play for runaway and when he was on runaway they were absolutely insane and as soon as he left they weren't really that insane anymore they couldn't even win korea contenders i'm not saying that contenders korea was easy to win it was completely free and runaway should have just won it i know it was high competition over there and x6 was amazing so was o2 ardent pretty much everybody was really good but let's be honest they were the huge favorites to win it after lunatic high left juicy basan left kongu panthera pretty much all of the great korean teams were gone and even a lot of the great korean players that were just spread out on a bunch of different teams they were picked up as well so the talent level definitely went down for korea and that's why runaway was definitely favored 
and they probably should have won. Sure, there are reasons they didn't. They lost Cox, they lost Tizzy, which is my point here. He was definitely a very important part of that team, especially during their season four run where they placed second place against GC Busan. So there's definitely a drop off in performance from Runaway. Now, talking about Tizzy, you could say, oh, well, if he was that good, why the hell didn't he play for London Spitfire? Come on, I think this is pretty obvious, guys, because they had Gesture. Gesture is one of the best main tanks in the league, even with London Spitfire struggling and him struggling a little bit, he is still the obvious choice. So, big pickups here coming out from XL2 Academy. I did expect them to have a better performance during Season 1. I was hyping them up big time. Besides them, I think I predicted pretty much everything right. Fusion University being the best, NRG being up there, and Vision, and Toronto Esports. But, New York Excelsior Academy roster, I thought they were going to definitely be a top 4 team. But they barely made top 8. So, these are huge additions for them, and I do believe they will make this team top three 100% coming contender season two. All right, let's move on now and talk about Leave. If you guys don't know who Leave is, he was an amazing DPS player in the Chinese scene prior to the Overwatch League. He played for Miraculous Youngsters. They were an insane Chinese roster and they were going toe to toe with teams like Runaway, Lunatic High last year prior to the Overwatch League. And everyone was expecting this entire Miraculous Youngsters roster to be picked up for their Overwatch League team. And when basically none of them got picked up, a lot of people were shocked. And, you know, that's where all the controversy started with the Chinese roster not being so strong and, you know, politics being played, whatever and whatever. So Leave retired from Overwatch after this. And so many people were sad because he was clearly one of the best players on that Miraculous Youngsters roster. They were good, but he was elite. When they played Lunatic High, he was destroying Fleta. He was destroying Wakid. He was destroying Munchkin. He pretty much whooped everybody's butt. So now he's coming back, guys, and leading into Season 2. And going into Season 2, you can only help to wonder, is the Shanghai Dragons finally going to pick up this player? Because if they don't, there's definitely going to be even more outrage. I mean, at least if Leaf comes back and proves that he is a top player still which I think he easily would because that guy was absolutely insane if he doesn't obviously you know then all right don't pick him up but if he's insane and Shanghai Dragons do not pick him up again whew, there is definitely going to be a lot of backlash about that because already the Shanghai Dragons they're in hot water with how they select their roster last year so if they do that crap again they are going to be in some trouble with the media, with Reddit, all that stuff. And that's going to be it for Leave and Shanghai Dragons. Let's go ahead and move on to the last piece of news. This is another contender's news. It's coming from Europe and the British Hurricanes. So with Craggy recently saying that he doesn't want to play Overwatch anymore, it seems like British Hurricanes are like, all right, then we're going to bench you. Or possibly Craigie said, hey, bench me, I don't want to play. Who knows what happened? But Craigie's on the bench now. And guess what? British Hurricane, they picked up two new players. They tweeted this out the other day. The Overwatch path to Pro Contenders EU Season 2 start is fast approaching. And we have a team update for all. Please welcome two new players as Nesh OW and Mikey AOW join the Hurricane. We would like to thank Craggy for all of his amazing play in Season 1 as he drops to the reserves. So there it is, guys. Craigie, he is benched or dropped the reserves, pretty much mean the same thing. And British Hurricane, they have picked up Mikey A to replace him. So if you guys don't know who Mikey A is, he did play for the Florida Mayhem Academy roster last season. He's also been on the UK Team World Cup. He was on them last year. And before that, he played with FaZe. Here and there, he's bounced around a couple teams. He has always been an amazing player when it comes to LAN. Every time he's on that stage, he seizes the moment and he looks amazing. But when he's played online, like when he was with the Florida Mayhem or when he was with FaZe, his performance was pretty shaky. So I don't know if that is, uh, you know, him just not really carrying online and really kicking it into high gear for LAN. Who knows? But he is a really good player when it comes to LAN, guys. So I expect him to be able to fulfill what Craggy was doing on Tracer or whatever the hell the meta is going to be. Moving on to the next guy, Nash. He's actually a pretty good player. He's bounced around a lot of teams throughout his career, though. He started off with Anox, a very early team from EU. They were pretty decent. Then he played briefly for Complexity Gaming. Then he was on Laser Kittens. He also played for Team Germany in the World Cup. Then Bazooka Puppies. And then another team named Six Snakes. And then he was finally picked up by the British Hurricane. He was also on Slav Squad, something I didn't mention. Strong player. These are definitely good pickups and replacement for Craggy. And that's going to be it for the British Hurricane and pretty much it for all of the news the past couple days. Let's go ahead and 
move on now. And now let's move on to the last part of this video and talk a little bit about Hanzo and the overall playoffs. How is he going to be impacting them? Which players have a lot of time on it? Who do I think will be more prepared? And let's just go ahead and hop into it. So I'm on the Winston's Lab website. We're looking at the stats. This is overall Hanzo play for the entire season. Everybody with over a thousand seconds. So as you can see, we have Siegel here. He's not in the playoffs. Jake, not in the playoffs. Linkser, not in the playoffs. Agilities. So I have this under kills per 10 minutes. It seems like Agilities is the best at killing. He's also pretty good at not dying, sitting at 4.9, which is definitely on the lower end. He's sitting at 4th. Not bad. He's also got 53 minutes, which is in the higher part of this. And moving on now, next, we have EQO, who is sitting just a little bit under Agilities there at 9.32. But he dies way more than him, and he's actually more at the bottom end of the agilities. So it seems like EQO versus agilities right now. Hanzo goes in the favor of agilities. Obviously, this is pre-changes, but it's pretty much the only thing we could look at right now. Moving on to the next guy, we have Mistakes. He's from the Boston Uprising. He's sitting at 9.21. So again, he's not too far behind EQO or agilities. He dies a little bit less than EQO, but he still dies a lot compared to agilities. Moving on to the next one, we have Libro, who in my opinion, and many others' opinion, is considered the best Hanzo, which, looking at the stats, they're pretty damn good. Only person he is under is Agilities, who's in the playoffs. Again, Jake, Linkster, Siegel, they are not in it. So, Libro, pretty good up there. Little bit behind Agilities. The thing is, though, Libro has way more time, more than double. So it's kind of hard to compare these two. I would definitely say Agilities and Libro right now with these stats look the best. Moving on to the next one, we have Profit. KD Wise, a little bit under Libero. Dies a little less than Libero, but kills a little less than Libero. Not too bad. And then lastly, we have Carpe, who only has 20 minutes. So we're not going to look into this too much. KD, not the best. We're, bare, we're pretty much just going to ignore that. And now this is overall Overwatch League. Let's look at just Stage 4, which started on May 15th. So boom, set that. Let's apply the filters and wait for it to load. Now again, I just want to say guys, these stats don't mean everything, they might not even mean that much, but I figured it would be good to take a look at them and see which player has played the most Hanza during the season, who has the best stats, and you know, it could correlate a little bit and say which team might have such an advantage. Because Libero, he did have a lot of time, New York Excelsior has a team they're used to playing around Hanzo, so they'll probably have a little bit of an advantage. And to be honest, a lot of their overall time on Hanzo comes from the stage, as you can see, Libro pretty much only missing like 40 minutes. Mistakes, basically the same. I don't maybe missing 10 minutes there. EQO, he's kind of the same. Agilities, pretty similar. Now, let's see if their stats change a little bit. Looking at KD, nope. Jake up there, Siegel up there. Agilities, EQO, Profit. Libro actually dropping a little bit on the KD there. Under Profit, under EQO, and Agilities. So, pretty interesting. We do see mistakes all the way at the bottom here. I say it's all pretty well-rounded, and nobody has that much of an advantage going into the Overwatch League playoffs. One last thing to note from here, though, we don't see any players from the LA Gladiators on here. And honestly, now that I think about it, I can't remember Surefor, Hydration, Asher, any of their DPS players touching Hanzo. So that might be a problem for them, but something also to note is Surefor is very flexible in anything he has played. He's been pretty damn good at it so far, so I wouldn't put it past him. And yeah, that's it for the Gladiators. I'd say if anybody did have an advantage, though, it would be the New York Excelsior because Libero overall has been the best performing Hanzo just when watching them play, not stat-wise. And that's pretty much it for this part, guys. I wanted to make this pretty quick because it doesn't mean too much, as I said, just something to look into and note a bit. And thank you for watching the video, guys. I'm done. If you enjoyed this, be sure to drop a like on it. Subscribe to my channel for more content. Also, I'm going to be live streaming right now on YouTube. Link is down below. Come watch me play Realm Rail. You can learn a lot of things. I'm on one of the best teams in the game. Pretty much the best. And yeah, thank you for watching, guys. Peace.